Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Friday, June 20th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The 26th lava fountaining episode at Kilauea has just occurred. And we have it all live over at Rumble on Magnetic Reversal News, fountaining to over 1,000 feet. Multiple severe weather threats in the Dakotas to talk about tonight and well, smoke spreading over the western U.S. Buckle up, buttercup, but before we get to it, summer solstice blessings for all. The solstice just occurred, and we wish you all the best. And keep calm, it's boom time. Summer solstice explained why June 20th marks the longest but not the hottest day of the year. Well, the summer solstice occurs to this year, precisely at 9.42 p.m. Central, daylight time on June 20th, today. And this is across the entire Northern Hemisphere. This day marks the longest stretch of daylight for the year. In Birmingham, Alabama, that means 14 hours and 22 minutes of sunlight, the longest day ever of the year. Daylight duration increases with latitude, reaching a full 24 hours inside the Arctic Circle. In these northern regions... The midnight sun remains visible for 10 to 12 consecutive days. At the North Pole itself, the sun won't set again until the autumnal equinox on September 22nd. Well, that would drive me absolutely crazy. What say you? Leave a comment below. Now, despite the solstice bringing the most daylight and the sun's most direct rays to the northern hemisphere, it doesn't coincide with the hottest temperatures of the year. And that's because Earth's surface warms gradually, absorbing and retaining heat over time. This delayed heating effect means peak summer temps typically occur from early July through mid-August. And those are the facts. Now, millions of people across the central and eastern U.S. are under a heat dome warning. With temperatures above 100 Fahrenheit expected as extreme hot air and humidity are trapped in the atmosphere. Now, what is a heat dome? Well, descending air compresses and warms as it drops closer to the surface. Temperatures can often reach the century mark in the eastern two-thirds of the United States. And in the west, these death ridges can push temperatures into the 120s in the desert, and that's what we're gonna be experiencing through early next week. The hail map for yesterday, Thursday, June 19th, was epic. 29,531 households impacted by one inch hail or larger, and 1,941 households impacted by gorilla hail. That's seven square miles. Well, and it looks like Minnesota, say it ain't soda, was the big winner, chicken dinner. Tornado HQ Live showing nine severe weather warnings, including three tornado warnings for North Dakota alone. So heed the warnings. We've got a severe pocket of weather for the next three hours. We'll be moving across the state and wreaking havoc. Check out tornadohq.com live for their severe weather, we severe weather map and live updates. Severe thunderstorms, oh, and now the full forecast. We've got severe thunderstorms in the northern plains and upper Midwest, critical fire weather in the west, and dangerous heat in the central and eastern U.S., ladies and gentlemen. Severe thunderstorms are likely today across the northern plains, including the Dakotas where it's exploding right now, and even the mid-Mississippi Valley. Gusty winds and dry conditions will result in widespread Critical fire weather through Saturday across parts of the Four Corners region and the Great Basin. A significant and dangerous heat wave will expand from the central U.S. into the eastern U.S. this weekend through much of next week. What a tweak. And we do have the fire and smoke map to see what's going on. We've got major fires pouring out of Utah, it appears, as well as New Mexico and even Arizona. And all that smoke is affecting Colorado in a big way. And you can see Pagosa Springs down here in that double gray. Hey, hey. And that's why we're in the haze and I can smell wildfire. It's over 80 degrees in the barn. It's insane. 
right now. And a quick look at the GFS model, and we can see that explosion of severe weather over North Dakota. In three hours, it'll be moving away and up north and gone, and North Dakota will be in the clear Saturday morning. And most of the weekend, it's going to be severe weather threat free for most of the U.S., but we have a winter storm in summer that's moving in through British Columbia, Alberta, and into the Northwest U.S., <laughs> It's going to be dumping some snow. Ho, ho, ho. And Al Gore is, well, Al Gore's mind is blown. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. Al Gore says it doesn't snow anymore. Well, it's snowing in summer, Al. And that is not a bummer. Let's take a look at the total snowfall accumulation from these events. And there you can see it rapidly dropping on the ground in the next few days. We're going to have areas of 18 or more inches up here through Alberta and potentially 8 to 10 inches in Idaho over a large swath in western Montana as well as Wyoming. So it's going to be white on the tips of those peaks over the weekend. Take a look if there's any flooding threats in the next few days. It looks like Alberta is going to be the big winner on that one. And we, we're losing a little bandwidth here. Yeah, no real flooding threats until early next week here in the purples. And that is through Thursday. We're going to be picking up two to four inches in many of these purple regions. Anomalous cold from Ukraine to Kazakhstan. Can you believe that? Much of Eurasia is shivering with vast swaths of Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and Russia enduring temperatures far below seasonal norms, as much as 12 degrees C below in some parts. Look at these dark purples. Holy macaroni. The Ukraine meteorologist Natalka Dedenko warns of a cold atmospheric front slicing through the country, bringing gusty northwest winds and market temperature drops. The broader Eurasian region tells a similar story. Must be global warming. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Most recent rumbler in the U.S. is a frack quake here, probably in Weston, Colorado. Normal activity worldwide. Low level indeed. Lava fountaining over 1,000 feet high shoots from Hawaii's Kilauea volcano. Hawaii's Kilauea volcano sent jets of lava shooting over 1,000 feet into the air early Friday morning, marking another episode uh, for the active volcano. In fact, the 26th episode, and we live streamed it earlier today, just 500 views. Go check it out on Magnetic Reversal News on Rumble and support our channels. Worldwide volcano news for the 20th of June. We've got Ducono to 9,000 feet. Take a look at Etna. Looks like a rocket ship there. Etna volcano eruption and lava flow yesterday. Raung on the list. Volcanic ash reported. Liwotolo, 7,000 foot puff, Ibu to 8,000 feet. Semadu, who knew? Now you do. Volcanic ash eruption reported. Ibu to 8,000. Kilauea to 10,000 feet on that 26th paroxysm. Semadu on the list, 15,000 foot. Liwotobi to 12,000. Raung to 17,000. Swanazima, 8,000 foot puff. And there we can see. Kilauea Volcano's 26th lava fountaining episode at the summit crater. Ducono to 13, Sungay to 19,000 feet. And wrapping up the list is Liwotolo with a 7,000 foot puff. And there is the 26th paroxysm over at Kilauea. If you want to see some spectacular fountaining, please go watch the video. And so we might as well just look at a little bit of it. Why wouldn't we? Is it parsing up? Is it happening? There we go. The biggest fountaining is at the beginning of the video, and it is hours long, six hours of powers, and very low resolution now as our bandwidth is limited. Well, a quick look at space weather, and you can obviously see in the last 24 hours activity is drastically reducing down into the B range. These sunspots are doing nothing. 
Very little flaring and no geomagnetic storms headed towards Earth. The two uh, impulsive X flares did not produce any large coronal mass ejections. And the sun is entering solar minimum once again. So we'll be dropping down off the cliff over the next several years. Now, this article is so disheartening. Glass bottles are now found to contain more microplastics than plastic bottles. Can you believe them, apples? Drinks, including water, soda, beer, and wine sold in glass bottles contain more microplastics than those in plastic bottles. How is that even possible? This is according to a surprising study released by France Food Safety Agency on Friday. Researchers have detected the tiny, most, mostly invisible pieces of plastic through the world from in the air we breathe to the food we eat. Guillaume Dufolos, research director at French Food Safety Agency, says the team sought to investigate the quantity of microplastics in different types of drinks sold in France and examine the impact different containers have. The researchers found an average of 100 microplastic particles per liter in glass bottles of soft drinks, lemonade, iced tea, and beer. That was 5 to 50 times higher than the rate detected in plastic bottles or metal cans, blowing the minds of the researchers. In fact, they expected the opposite result, PhD student Iceleen Chaib who conducted the researchers, told AFP. They noticed that in the glass, the particles emerging from the samples were the same shape, color, and polymer composition. So therefore, the same plastic. As the paint on the outside of the caps that seal the bottles. So what happens is these caps get made and painted. They get put in big boxes. They get shipped around, shooken up. The plastics get removed from the paint. And they get distributed as dust on the bottom of the cap before the cap gets put on the bottle. And then the cap gets put on the bottle and contaminates the entire bottle. <sighs> Capitalism. Big manufacturing. All this is leading to cancer. and the destruction of humanity. That's what's happening here. Links will be below. And ladies and gentlemen, there is still time to get in on the most amazing private petroglyph tour on earth. We're going to be seeing ruins. We're going to be seeing petroglyphs. We might even collect some artifacts. Who knows? The ultimate petroglyph panel on earth is in the Canyon of the Ancients, and we'll go see it with you if you buy a ticket. It's just a week away. Canyon of the Ancients, Skull Castle Ruin, Plasma Petroglyphs, and the Ultimate Petroglyph Panel all in one day. Hey, hey. If you can, do it now. Buy a ticket. Meet us in Cortez, Colorado in just eight days. A one-of-a-kind event happening, exploring the Canyon of the Ancients in a way that most people don't get to do. It takes most people days to explore it. We're going to give it to you all in a quick five, six hour package where you get to see ruins after ruins, petroglyph after petroglyph, and your mind will be blown because these regions no one knows about except a few individuals like Rex Bear and Diamond Dave. So please join us in the desert in eight days for the ultimate petroglyph panel tour, Canyon of the Ancients and Skull Castle Ruins. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Half the people viewing are unsubscribed. And we need your help to grow. We're trying to get 100,000 subs by the end of the year. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Me, me, me.